Good morning. Sorry, there was some little technical hitch, and so we lost a couple of uh, minutes. Doesn't matter. It's all part of uh, uh, life, no? Sometimes we get rejected by our laptop or uh, by the stream yard or whatever it is. Even they tend to reject uh, uh, us. It doesn't matter. We have to accept it as part of uh, uh, life. So what do we uh, uh, do? Firstly, uh, you may be thinking why such a negative uh, uh, topic, you know, because my experience has been, I have seen that uh, if life is going fine, you have not had to suffer any rejection. Nobody has let you down. Then you say, no, what is there to talk about these things? Maybe those people who don't know how to handle their relationships, maybe those who mess it up. I'm not that type of person, you know. I know how to take care of my loved ones and how to maintain relationships. So it won't happen to me. Why should anybody reject uh, uh, me? And I, I can handle it. So thereby, we are very complacent. The flip side of it is I come across somebody who has actually been rejected by a uh, loved one. What happens in that uh, uh, case? They feel so negative. They feel so sad. They have even lost the motivation to think rationally or to participate in this sort of discussion. And they want to just uh, you know, snuggle into their own shell and be away from everybody. So that is how we tend to go into these two extremes. But what I am talking about is that we need to look into the fact like how I always tell, you know, just because you are a good driver does not mean you will never have an accident. Accidents happen not only because you may be driving badly, but it can happen for a hundred different reasons. Somebody else may have been driving rashly and that's why the accident took place. You know, some pothole may be there which has not been filled up and therefore, you know, because of the pothole you had an accident. It may be a small child who ran onto the road. And because of that, we got uh, into this uh, uh, accident. So there are so many things like that, isn't it? So what do we do? We have to prepare. What happens if you have an accident? If you prepare yourself for it, then you are not taken by surprise. That's what I'm trying to prepare you today. Starting with when we say rejected by a loved one. Let me very clearly define what I mean by a loved one. There are a lot of people whom we like, and there are a few people whom we love. Let us be clear that we should never mix up these two. You may like somebody considerably. You may, in fact, respect some uh, somebody very uh, uh, much. You may admire uh, somebody for certain great uh, qualities. You may have gratitude towards somebody. These are all very strong and very you know, uh, binding type of emotions, but they are not directly connected to love. Just because I feel thankful to somebody for having done me a great favor, it does not necessarily mean that I love that person. I admire the traits in such a person. I like the way that person behaves and I like the way that person interacts. And there are so many nice things to learn from that uh, person. So I like him immensely. But still, it doesn't mean that I love. The reason why I'm separating this out is that if you get rejected, ignored, let down by somebody whom you look up to and admire or respect or feel gratitude towards, and that person lets you uh, down, nothing really happens uh, uh, to you. You don't really uh, you know, feel so bad. But that is where I bring you that if you love that uh, a person and loving that person may have nothing to do with how much you appreciate his or her qualities. It will have nothing to do with how much that person has done uh, to you to make you feel thankful. It may have nothing to do with the uh, fact that that person leads a very respectable life and has got certain very great characteristics which everybody else looks up to, all that may not be there. Because love is such a very unpredictable emotion that you just get into it without even realizing it. And then you just uh, uh, stick to it. The great uh, 
Urdu poet Ghalib uh, had said, uh, you know, Ishq wo atish hai Ghalib. Atish means fire. Ishq wo atish hai Ghalib. Jo lagaye na lage aur bujhaye na bane. Lagaye na lage. You can't stoke, you can't put on that fire by saying, I want to love, I want to fall in love. It doesn't happen that way. So, uh, Ishq wo atish hai Ghalib. Jo lagaye na lage aur bujhaye na bane. That means once the flame is on, you do not have the heart to put it off. You are stuck with it. Now, this is a very significant thing I want you to think of. That when we start loving a person, we are just not open to unloving that uh, uh, person. Even if that person has wrong characteristics. Even if that person is not treating us the way we want. We have this tendency to cling on to that uh, person. So much so, if you have noticed, in many cases, the moment I feel that I love somebody, I automatically want love from that person as though it's some sort of a you know, automatic monitor that the moment I love and I get that love back from somebody else. Haven't you seen this sort of thing happening that uh, a boy and girl become friendly and start getting closer and closer and closer to each other? One fine day, either of them expresses and says, I love you. Automatically, the other person is supposed to respond by saying, I love you too. And they think, ha. It is like one enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. Some great fire has been lit and here we are, both of us in love with each other. Now the question that arises is that A said, I love you because A kept thinking, thinking that yes, I don't just like this person. This person is not just my friend. This person is very special. I want to have a very exclusive and a very loving relationship with this uh, person and the person keeps the emotion keeps coming to the point where the person decide that yes I am going to express my love to the person B but what about the person B is the person B some sort of Newton's uh, uh, third law or whatever it is that action and reaction are equal and opposite to each other why is it that person B did not say I love you yesterday why should he or she say today when the person is told that I love you? And I always laugh at this. Visualize a situation where this you know, boy and girl have been very close to each other. They've been dating. They've been getting very, very happy with each other and enjoying each other's company. And as I said, person A tells person B, I love you. And person B says, thank you very much. I feel very nice to receive your love and as far as my feelings towards you are concerned, give me some time, let me think over and reply to you. Person A is going to become very unhappy. But isn't that the right response? That yes, just now you have said that you love me. Now give me time to think whether I love you also or not. Nobody is willing to wait for that. These are small things which we need to take into account because this is what determines whether this love that I A has towards B can develop and nurture into a long-term loving relationship or not. It starts with, you know, those sort of uh, uh, things. In fact, when we talk about being rejected by a loved one, please also remember that there are so many people, there are so many A, as I said, between A and B, who decide that I love B. And therefore, B has to be mine. B has to reciprocate. B has to love me. A keeps on and on and on, you know, pursuing B. At one point, B says, no, it's getting a little claustrophobic. This person is becoming a little too uh, uh, clingy. This person is not, uh, uh, you know, giving me the type of interaction that I uh, want uh, to. 
and the person starts pulling out. No, I don't think I'd like to be so close to this person and this person is not giving me space. If that happens, person A says, I have been rejected by B. But B had never accepted you. Where is the question of being rejected by uh, B? In a later uh, uh, vein, there was this uh, uh, very notorious uh, villain in Bollywood uh, called Prem Chopra. He used to say, Mera naam hai Chopra, Prem Chopra, you know, in the James Bond style. So there was an incident in uh, one movie where uh, he is, as usual, you know, trying to rape the heroine or something like that. And the heroine is getting extremely disturbed and she's shouting, screaming, crying. And she tells him, Ke Bhagwan ke liye mujhe chhod do. Bhagwan ke liye mujhe chhod do. Mujhe chhod do. And Prem Chopra says, Pahle pakad to loon jame man, phir chhodunga. I haven't even caught you as a question of letting you go, right? The same thing applies to loving relationships. We need to start off with asking whether it was a loving relationship two-way in the first instance or not. And while I have mentioned this to you from the point of view of man-woman relationship, the same thing applies anywhere else. I may presume that I love my father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, whoever it is. But just because there's a defined relationship, the other person may feel obliged towards me, but may not necessarily love me, right? It takes a lot of effort and courage to even admit that I don't love my so-and-so, my nearest and uh, dearest. Yes, I have a certain amount of uh, maybe gratitude towards my father because he had to put in a lot of struggle to bring me up and all that. I feel he has certain good qualities which I admire also. But I do not love my father. Very few people have that self-awareness and that courage to be able to admit it to themselves. They did not even tell their father and hurt uh, so these are some of the things that I want you to you know, keep in uh, mind that when you talk about rejection, was the acceptance there in the first place and then it turned into uh, rejection. So let's move to the second uh, level. A says, tells B that I love you and B also tells A that I love you and they get into a loving uh, relationship. Now. As I have uh, been pointing out earlier uh, also, every relationship needs to be nurtured. And the closer the relationship, the more it needs to be nurtured. Khadija rightly has written that by the time we understand it is quite late. And that's what I'm going to be coming to. That why is it that it gets late? Just to give you an example, what are the possibilities that, that this rejection took place overnight? And what are the possibilities that this rejection was there on the way? The cracks had started slowly appearing, but I chose to ignore them. That's a very important thing. Sometimes we get so caught up, so complacent in a relationship. This is my own child, so he has to love me. This is my own father, so he has to love me. This is my romantic partner, my spouse, so she has to love me. It doesn't work that way. I was just thinking of giving you a few tips to understand in advance when a relationship is going bad, many of us, you know, what we do, we tend to ignore. So if I love B, and I've also been having a fairly good understanding and relationship, I take it for granted that that relationship will last forever. But if I give myself a few indicators or a few tips or a few things of understanding, a sort of periodic review, no? like how you do a health checkup, 
just because your health is perfectly okay you have not had to fall sick or be bedridden that does not mean that you can take it for granted so what do you do you go back for let's say an annual health check up you go to your doctor and say doctor do it even the doctor will say okay considering that this is your age or this is your weight or this is your blood pressure i think we'll check on these parameters and we'll check if anything needs to be done if nothing needs to be done then your health is okay you go ahead fine if something needs to be done we can nip it in the bud so if your blood sugar levels are slightly high i can immediately put you on to some therapy by which you can bring it under control is for waiting for you to become a chronic uh, diabetic and then going into serious problems is it the same thing applies to a relationship so what i have done is i have just compiled a few basic questions for you to answer to yourself if you find any of these uh, indicators are there i would like you to use it as a warning so here you are sunita is putting on the few indicators let's go over them one by one i'm using the word he but it can be a she also okay don't go by the gender he consistently forgets to do things for you if i am so important to him then he should keep in mind that i need this i had asked for that or i am running short of this or whatever it is but if consistently he forgets to do things for you and forgets you can put in inverted commas when you find that happening on a continuous basis please make note that there may be a possibility that something is going wrong in this relationship and the other person may not be feeling the same way towards me as i feel towards the other person next you don't feel comfortable asking for support i used to tell this loved one do this i wouldn't even tell the other my loved one would sense that i need this and would ensure that i get it then slowly it came to a point where i started telling the person i need this i want this and then that person would oblige and fulfill it then came the point which i told you in point number 1 i find that the person is consistently forgetting to do it i had told the person in the morning by evening he says hey it slipped my mind completely okay i'll do it tomorrow or something like that and if that leads on to the fact that you don't feel comfortable asking for support no i think i'll get it done by myself or i think i'll request somebody else to do that for uh, me and not comfortable asking for that person the second nail in the coffin has been put then he does something for you but you feel it is not enough yes he does come out with uh, um, something but to you it looks like it was a half hearted attempt he just did it because i asked for it he did it because i reminded him he did it because he felt more like an obligation to me and not because it came from within the heart that this is my loved one i should do this to this person and i will feel happy doing this yes you know it doesn't seem like this so if you get this uneasy feeling that while he is doing some things for you but you feel that it is not enough that is another factor next you don't feel safe to be upset and find yourself hiding your feelings so this person has done something or not done something or forgotten something and in the normal course you would have told the person you would have argued with the person you would have sulked or cried or you would have shouted at that uh, uh, person saying hey you are my loved one i expect you to do this and i am very unhappy that you have not done it but if you find yourself at a stage where you don't feel safe to be upset with him or her and you start hiding your feeling what's the point in telling it will lead to further unpleasantness let me not even bring up the topic next 
you find yourself getting upset over small issues and avoiding the real issues. I have seen this happening very often. See, just because I am unhappy with certain major issues, certain major expectations from the person, but I don't feel like bringing it up as I told you in the previous point. I feel insecure that, uh, you know, if I tell him or her, what will be the reaction? Will it make matters worse? Will it look like I'm making too much demands and all that? So, you know what I do? I start getting upset over small issues. You don't keep the shoes in the proper rack. You just you know, throw it near that door and go away. Now, in a close relationship, is that a major issue to bring up and to argue over? Normally, no. But it does happen because you are avoiding the real issue. And yet you want to bring out something. So what you do is you look up at tangible things. Every family member is supposed to put the shoe in the rack. But this person just left the shoe near the door and came off. So here is a tangible thing. I can indirectly bring out my anger and my frustration by saying, you are doing this, this. And in the process, what am I doing? I am avoiding the real issues. And the real issues start piling up more and more and more. Next. He no longer is attracted to you and you don't care. There was a time when you got a new dress or you got something, you know. The first thing that you would feel like is to show it to this person and say, how is this looking? How am I looking? How do you feel about this? And the person used to say, hey, great, fantastic, congratulations. Oh, you're looking so nice or this is so good for you. I'm so happy for you. All that used to happen. Somewhere you feel this person doesn't seem to be attracted to you. This person doesn't seem to have that, you know, that spark in the relationship is no longer uh, uh, there. And again, I'm repeating while I'm using for convenience the man woman relationship, it equally applies to any close relationship, any relationship which you would define as a loved one. I mentioned it could be father, mother, son, daughter, brother, sister, best friend, whatever it is. So it applies equally. Now that person is no longer attracted to you. I'm not just saying romantically attracted. But the person used to always admire and say, hey, you've got yourself a new hairstyle. You're looking so nice. Show me how you're looking. What are you doing? Now this person doesn't seem to be bothering about this. And the second part is very important. You don't seem to care. It's okay. I won't even show that person that this this, this is the uh, thing. I'll show it to somebody else. This is another very strong indicator that something is going wrong in the relationship. Next. You feel resentful that you are giving more than what the other person is giving. You start calculating. Earlier, when the relationship was going very well, you didn't bother. That person loves me, that person belongs to me, that person is there for me, it's enough. Physically, I am willing to do 10 times more than what the other person is doing because I love this person. This person is so important to me, I care for this person. So I'm willing to give unconditionally. But if you come to a stage where you start resenting, if you start thinking that, hey, She is not doing this, but I am doing more. She is not reciprocating, but I am uh, continuously giving more and more to her. That is when things are going wrong. And then we come to the eighth and last one. You feel that if he would change, then only you would be happy. Right now, I'm not happy. But if that person changes, no? If that person brings about a better behavior, if that person stops doing these irritating things, if this person starts paying more attention to me, then and then only I would be happy. These eight points that I collated is to help you to understand one of the most basic things, and that is that you do not get rejected overnight. It is not a sensational, melodramatic thing as they show in the movies or in novels or something. My experience has been 
majority of the relationships that break up, vast majority of the people who come for counseling and say, I have been rejected by a loved one and I'm feeling miserable about uh, uh, that. Khadija has asked, what if the person doesn't realize and doesn't change? That is when the person one fine day comes to the point where he says, see, I've been rejected so badly. I thought I am in such a great loving relationship and I thought everything is going fine. And it hits you like a fire. So that, in effect, is the basics of, you know, what could happen. Now, the only part that I have not covered is, what do you do if despite all your best efforts, your relationship from the other side breaks down in the sense that the other person sort of lets you down, disappoints you, rejects you, whatever word you want to, description you want to use. When that happens, what can I do to accept the reality and move on is what I am going to talk to you. As they say in the TV serials, after the break, because Adil has brought me a nice hot cup of tea, and I'll just take one minute and hand you over to Seema, who is going to just give you a quick update, and then I'll be back in a minute. Right, Ali. So talking about rejection, rejection by a loved one, you know, the feelings, the emotions that you go through, abandonment, isolation, feeling extremely lonely, hurt, agitated. So many feelings go, you know, uh, emotions uh, go on uh, in your uh, mind and you feel miserable, right? So uh, uh, if you want to reach out, if you're feeling like that or if you think that somebody else who's close to you, is feeling like that, uh, please reach out to us. We have a, uh, you know, a fleet of uh, excellent counselors here in Banjara. And, uh, uh, you know, you can reach out if you're in uh, Bangalore, please uh, come to our center uh, and, uh, you know, speak face to face. If you're outside, you can reach out to us uh, on the phone or uh, even write to us. And uh, each session is uh, confidential. It is a one on one session. So please do not hesitate because probably at that time you need uh, somebody who can understand what you're going through and at the same time who doesn't judges you or advises you, you know. So that is uh, something that we do in Banjara. And uh, as you know, our uh, counseling uh, is absolutely free. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Right. And uh, I would also say that, uh, you know, once that venting uh, out happens and all of that, you want to start looking at yourself. You want to start, uh, you know, working on yourself. You need that empowerment to move on and, you know, uh, think. And, and of course, the first thing is self-love, loving yourself. All these things, if you really want to work on yourself, we have this wonderful program called Diploma in Counseling Skills. It's a one year part time program. Those of you who are in Bangalore, uh, please uh, reach out to us. We'll uh, tell you about the program. It's it's really uh, it's something that uh, actually empowers you. I think each one of us has experienced that. And uh, and not only for yourself, uh, you also can become a trained professional counselor. You can reach out to several other people and our methodology is very practical. It's very experiential. You don't need to be a psychology student for that. You don't need to have any background in psychology because what we do in the classroom is extremely practical. Uh, practicing counselors come and take your classes and, uh, you know, everything is done in the form of role plays, demonstrations from day one itself of the class. So, uh, in the month of June, we uh, kickstart the program every year. We are already in the 23rd year of this program. Uh, it's a highly uh, successful program. So please, uh, you know, reach out to us. We'll be very glad. In fact, now, hopefully the lockdown should be over and you can come and meet us in office and uh, please come and see, uh, meet us in Banjara. You know, you'll find some uh, a cozy set of, uh, uh, you know, an atmosphere where you find uh, genuine uh, loving people. And, uh, you know, for that human touch, uh, I think, uh, yes, please reach out to us, whether or not you want to empower yourself with this course or whatever, or just come to have a chat with us. Uh, you're always welcome. That's that's something that we really enjoy meeting up with people. And, uh, you know, it'll be our pleasure. So 
with that i uh, hand you back to dr ali thanks a lot sima yes what happens when you get rejected firstly they say no don't flog a dead horse normally in the olden days you know the man used to keep flogging the horse so that move 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 even if the horse is tired even if the horse is injured he would keep flogging him and making him so miserable that the horse keeps moving and taking the cart but the proverb says you cannot flog a dead horse a horse which is already dead now you are flogging and expecting it to move it will not same thing happens with relationships the first hurdle and believe me i have seen this so often among people is acceptance how can it be how can x reject me how can y stop loving me how can z t uh, you know put me down so badly or cheat me so badly it cannot happen but it has happened i gave you those eight points just as indicators sometimes it is staring you on the face the person has just cut you off completely the person doesn't want to have anything to do with you the person has moved on in uh, uh, life and that is what we need to understand i agree with suman that it burns you out you get exhausted and that's what i told in the beginning also that people then even you know stop reaching out they think it is my karma and the one only one who is suffering i am miserable and all these things keep um, happening and you don't even start moving towards what should be uh, uh, done Sandhya is asking, uh, you know, if a person who is a family member neglects you and snubs you, it hurts a lot. Need few tips on how to overcome, and that is what I'm saying. See, just because the person happens to be a family uh, member, it does not necessarily mean that the person is going to love you or take care of you or, you know, be very happy with you. Relationship at the emotional level has got nothing to do with the definition of being a family member. And I've been telling that, uh, please understand. that we are moving more and more towards non defined um, uh, relationships so can you not move beyond your family and look for others why do you feel that you have to depend only on uh, you know your own family members to give you what you are looking for in the same way vinita says how do we convey to young adults while counseling them as many of them have very serious relationship issues their whole definition of love is very different everything is very short uh, one thing vinita let us not generalize and say that you know this happens with the young adults believe me i know so many not at all very young adults who behave like adolescents so one thing is that let us not generalize so there is no uh, you know one size fits all or one answer or something of that uh, um, uh, sort there is no such thing uh, uh, like that but yes let's take it individual whether young or not so young you have this person who is not uh, you know understanding the significance of long term relationships and all the answer is very simple i have repeated this so many times you can take the horse to the water you cannot make it drink the water but one good thing that i have seen is that gently non uh, uh, you know directive way non judgmentally if i cre just create that awareness that i have a feeling that this is what is happening to you i think you are headed for this i feel sad for you that maybe you have landed in such a situation which is going to be very hurtful or painful to you and in case you feel the need i am there with you i will always support you regardless of what you choose to uh, do when you have leave that person with that you will be amazed at the number of people particularly since you mentioned young people who may be a little impulsive and may be looking at short term 
uh, things. Eventually, what happens is that they sleep over it, they think over it, and then either they learn to how to resolve it by themselves by taking it more seriously and working on it, or they come back to you and then ask you. Okay. So I'll just quickly run through the uh, things, uh, you know, uh, which you need to do if it is very clear that somebody has rejected you. The first is do not flog a dead horse. Accept it that for whatever the reason, the other person does not seem to be interested in the relationship or the other person wants to back off and reduce the relationship. See, always not even look at uh, things in black and white. The other person may still want to give to you, but give only 50% of what she was giving you earlier. So you have to now see whether that 50% is good enough and whether you'd like to move on with that 50% or even you have the choice that no, I wanted 100% since I'm not getting 100%. I don't want anything from this person. I'll move on. I have other people in my life, which is what brings me to the second uh, action point in this. That is. Do you have other people to fill in the vacuum? If you have put all your eggs in one basket, I have seen a mother sacrificing her whole life and focusing only on her son. This is my one and only child. My whole purpose of life is to bring up this child and give him a good upbringing and this, all these type of, you know, focusing on only one human being. And that person grows up and one fine day says that I've fallen in love with this Firangi and I'm pushing off to USA and I'll send you an uh, e-greeting card once in a year on your birthday. It can be devastating. It can be miserable. But do you realize that it was your fault? You had put all your eggs in one uh, basket. And that is why. To prevent that also, however good relationship you have with your loved one, Always have other people in your life. And the moment you realize that you have been rejected by somebody and somebody let you down, immediately start making a list of the other people who are there in your life. Relationships which you can nurture further. The third uh, uh, is to check on your self-esteem levels. See, when somebody rejects me, that to somebody very close, I start questioning myself, am I even lovable? Am I worthy of somebody's love? This person who I thought is so uh, loving uh, to me has outright rejected uh, me. So maybe I'm not capable of uh, uh, love. That is something that you need to look into. Suraka has put in a good question. I'll just answer that in a uh, uh, moment. The other thing is not to be all the time self-righteous. I am right. She is wrong. She is the one who has cheated me. I am the one who gave everything to this relationship. But the other one did this, this, this. See, relationships are not like a court of law where one person is trying to prove the other person wrong and thereby win the case or something of that sort. It doesn't work that way. So keep away this right and wrong business. Look for peace, happiness, you know, that uh, thing of what we call a serenity of being able to be a, have a good quality of uh, uh, life. If you keep focusing on that, then you will not be stuck up with this. I am right. You are wrong and things here. You should also um, take a call whether you'd like to still be connected to that person. And if so, at what level, how much? By firstly protecting yourself from hurt and from being cheated or from being rejected. And yet, if there is something still there in the relationship, please give a serious thought whether it is worth continuing with that uh, relationship. Another very important point I wanted to tell you was do not form new relationships on the rebound. Unfortunately, I've seen many people doing that. My girlfriend has rejected uh, me and she ran off with somebody else or whatever has happened. And I will prove that I am capable. So I immediately latch on to the next girl who I see and try to get into a relationship with her. Anything of this sort. Relationships on the rebound never work. Please keep that in mind. In fact, you need a cooling off period when you have been rejected. As I told you, you have to build up your self-esteem. 
you have to overcome that factor of loneliness. You have to make a list of who all are the other people in my life so that I know that I am blessed. I have people who love me, who care for me and who are there uh, with me. Go through that like a grieving process. I keep talking about the grieving process on death. This is a death of a relationship. So you more or less have to go through a similar uh, you know, grieving uh, uh, process. And the last point in this is please understand the difference between the emotion called love and the action called a loving relationship. Now, if the other person has rejected me, I obviously cannot have a loving relationship with that person because it has become one-sided. If I do want to continue, I will be sort of clinging on. I will be emotionally dependent and it will be like a charity that the other person is continuing with me, right? So let, I have accepted that I can no longer have a loving relationship with this person. That does not necessarily mean that I have to wipe out the love from my heart. I keep reminding this to people. If you are a warm, caring, understanding person, a person with some amount of consistency and resilience, a person with stability and maturity in your life, your emotions cannot be switched off like that. You have invested in this relationship. You have loved this person for a very long uh, time. Now, just because the other person has rejected you, you can't press that uh, red button and switch off your uh, mind like how you switch off your mobile phone. So acknowledge the fact that I still love this person to whatever extent. This person definitely has some good characteristics. That's why I started loving her in the first place, isn't it? I can't wipe all that out just because the other person has rejected uh, me. So I will continue to have that nice, warm feeling of love in myself. See, having love in you makes you a very serene, happy, contented uh, uh, person, regardless of whether you're getting reciprocation from the other person, your love should not be dependent on getting reciprocation from the other uh, uh, person. If you keep this in mind, you can continue loving the person without having any interaction with that person. Rejoice, recall some of the lovely moments that you have shared with each other. Cherish what you have learned from that person, cherish how you got certain you know, inputs in terms of enriching your life when the relationship was going on. Use it as a means to understand how to build better relationships in future. How to ensure that you do not get rejected or cheated next time. And how not to put all your eggs in one basket so that you should not feel miserable um, uh, later. Yes, Nandini, it is an emotional investment. And any investment, you know, we do with the hope that we are going to get something back in return, right? When we invest money, it is very clear. What percentage of interest or profit am I going to get? Then I will invest. More or less the same thing happens at the emotional uh, level. Lila says when a teacher likes a studious student, the other keeps scolding how a student should accept that uh, um, rejection. Rejection by whom? This student is being rejected by the other teacher who does not love him. The other teacher does not care for this student. The other teacher, in fact, is a jealous teacher because this student is uh, uh, studious and the other colleague appreciates, acknowledges and encourages this uh, student. So this teacher is feeling jealous. The moment you get rejected by a person whom you do not love, who has never loved you and who is not important in your life, just learn how to mentally block that person out. Maybe because that person is a teacher, the student will have to say good morning, ma'am, whenever she encounters or something. But beyond that, mentally switch off from that person. It takes a little bit of effort, but it is easy. Because anyway, you neither love that uh, grouchy teacher nor has that teacher ever uh, you know, loved you. Tina says, we also take failures and rejections are our shortcomings as to how my family, society would see me. 
everyone around normalizes this by saying it happens to all this is life work on it but it is your cross destiny that's a sad part about life you know that's exactly what seema was also saying few minutes back that if you want to learn how to understand others how to deal with others how to reach out to others that's what we keep doing on a consistent basis to clarify these very simple but very important aspects that you know forget about how certain people in society certain neighbors certain relatives sometimes even your own family members in all their ignorance or their jealousy whatever may be their reasons but they start off with all this that it's your cross it's your destiny it's your karma never get carried away uh, by that okay emma malni wants to know the difference between infatuation and love in the teenage uh, uh phase the funny thing is that uh, you know uh, infatuation can take place far beyond teenage also and i've seen that happening people don't admit it because they say oh i am so old how can i say that i'm infatuated with this person but it can happen see infatuation is a very impulsive thing whenever something happens on an impulse it's like you are walking in front of a shop and that you suddenly see that shop has put up a banner saying that 80% discount and you say oh i'm getting for 20% of the value and you go and jump in and say and there is a sign board saying that this was costing 1000 rupees now you are getting it only for 200 rupees and impulsively you pick it up and bring it home then you realize one of two things either i didn't need it why did i buy it secondly this person has cheated me it actually is not even worth 200 uh, rupees he just made a show that it is 1000 rupees and 80% discount and all that if i had been wise enough maybe i could have got it for 150 rupees somewhere else and that too when i needed uh, uh, it so infatuation is something like this the only advice that i can give to somebody who is infatuated you cannot tell that person don't love this person or get away from that person this is momentary this is infatuation that person will not listen the only thing is that you teach that person what we are trying to teach the entire younger generation delayed gratification do not expect instant results okay you are infatuated with this person you feel that this person is the absolute mr right miss right soul mate whatever names you want to give it just give a little time that's all i'm asking for continue with your life see that your life is not disrupted if you are a student see that your studies don't get affected if you are having other commitments to family or work or something see that that is not affected within that just continue give yourself time and one fine day you yourself will be able to decide whether it is love or infatuation i am not going to tell you nikhil ram said i escaped from a bad relationship now i keep overthinking how my life would have been miserable if i had continued i have been overthinking for almost one year how to overcome this yes if it has happened for a year and you are not being able to come out of it, any such emotion that's what simma told you that we are here to help so we need to sort of you know analyze it in a little more threadbare fashion there could be certain parameters which are preventing you from bouncing back or from healing or from moving on but we need to go a little more into the depth and understand because if you have made an effort for one year and this is a very good example to all the other participants of this program that sometimes when we fail to you know do the therapy and the healing even one year down the line you may still be hurting from that bad relationship one year back you got out of the relationship so physically you have no liability you have nothing for that you are a free bird you can do whatever you want but it is the hurt which is so painful that it is preventing you from uh, moving uh, uh, on nandini says midlife crisis yes quite possible it could be anything of that uh, uh so but the point is that we need to keep focusing and understanding what happened why things went uh, uh, wrong and so many of these factors which we tend to you know uh, neglect it tina had also said maybe the definition of family and relationships in society makes us want to stick to these relationships alone the thought of other people is unheard of and sometimes we shut ourselves uh, um uh, from these support systems yes you know you're absolutely uh, uh, right that is the mistake that we make and because of that we lose out it is exactly what i told you that you put all your eggs in one basket and then you realize that 
I'm not getting beyond it. Why should I put that? Label? Yes, there was a time few generations back when everything revolved around family, community, caste and all that. There were good reasons, bad reasons. I'm not going into that. But today that no longer holds. You can go ahead with life with other people also. Okay. Um, we have another interesting uh, uh, question from Surekha. Um, when the husband is focused on logical interaction and the emotional realm is uh, absent and the wife feels rejected despite uh, telling um, uh, him that she needs emotional connection, discuss feelings and he says, that's the way I am. We can talk about performance and career goals and so on. But sharing feelings is a no, no for me. How does she deal with feelings of rejection? So like I would like here for you to think, is it really rejection? See, the husband is a typical male, perhaps. I'm just, I should not be judging because I don't know the person uh, concerned. But the husband is probably a person who has been brought up in a typical male uh, approach that you are a boy. You should not cry. You should not express emotions. You should not be sentimental. You should be brave. You should be courageous. All that has been drilled into him for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, whatever age he got married. And now he has a life partner who is a counterpart. She is a woman. And she has been brought up on emotions, on sentiment on intuition, on relationships. And that is the reason why she has certain expectations from him. But he is being absolutely clear. He is saying we can talk about performance, career goals, but feeling sorry, I can't do it. It is not rejection. Please first let that wife understand that he is not rejecting her. He is just being what he is. So instead of forcing him to come into this, there are two things which she can do. One is to take whatever she gets from the husband. And if she wants sharing feelings and all that, she should find somebody else. She will definitely find somebody. It may be her mother. It may be her best friend. It may be a counselor. She will find somebody. So she should move on to that person for fulfilling that need. Okay. And the second thing that she could do because this person is your life partner and you've got your whole life ahead with uh, uh, him, is to periodically, you keep sharing feelings. Tell the person, I don't want a reaction. I don't want response. Are you relaxed now? You're not tired or uh, you know, you're not caught up with some other thoughts and all that. No, why? I just wanted a few minutes with uh, for you to sit and listen. Yeah, what is it to uh, listen? See, emotionally, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling concerned, I'm feeling disappointed, I'm feeling hurt about this, I'm feeling this about that. The moment you complete it, before he gets embarrassed as to how to react, you say, come, let's go and have a cup of coffee or something like that and move on from uh, there. So what have you achieved? You have put that seed in his mind. And as I was telling you earlier about, you know, slowing down in life and going things at its own pace, slowly the plant will nurture. I have seen typically left brain logical men over a period of time developing an understanding on the emotional angle. You have to give them time. You don't, should never push them or force them. And you should not get the feeling that this is some form of a rejection or something of that uh, you know, Shobha says, my brother-in-law grows uh, his son with a lot of financial hurdles. But now his son neglects him. His son also uh, faced love failure and asks for money, even though he's a software engineer. How can I help uh, them? Now, uh, please remember, Shobha, there is no such thing as helping them. These are two individual human beings. You have to treat them separately. So one is your brother-in-law and one is his son. You have to understand, can you reach out to either of them? Are they willing to open to you? If yes, you un first understand them at their own uh, level. Make that person talk about everything from his perspective and then make him understand. Like I told you, you have made a bad investment and today you are crying. The father has made 
given uh, his son all sorts of financial support. Why did he do it? Did he do it with the hope of getting things back? So is the son like a bank fixed deposit that you put your money and you wanted to get back? Help him gently, slowly to uh, understand. Similarly, talk to the son, find out. When you are a software engineer, why do you even now depend on your father? What is it that you want from uh, um, him? Why is it that you are not able to be financially independent? All we can do is to help them to introspect, to understand themselves better and to understand the relationship better. But finally, remember, and that too, because it's somebody very close to you, your own brother-in-law and your own nephew, do not interfere too much. If they choose to be at loggerheads and if they choose to not understand each other they are adults let it be back off continue to be a good family member etc but as shogini says we always want that emotional support from our family and we feel hurt if we don't get that that's your want shogini i may want a mercedes car but i have only a centro i feel very hurt i don't have money to buy a mercedes whose problem is it and have created that problem so somewhere we need to tone down and say that, no, I want emotional support, but they don't want to give it to me or they're giving it to me in small bits and pieces. I want and I, uh, um, uh, things. The lady is asking, you heard couples getting divorced after more than 20 years. Yes, in fact, the highest rate of increase in divorces of late uh, in a city like Bangalore, at least, has been among people who have been married for more than 20, 25 years because they were continuously unhappy, but they had children. They had parents whom they had to give due consideration to. They had, you know, restrictions of society. 25 years of marriage and the woman says, my children are grown up and gone. My parents are too old to worry about me. I'm financially independent. So I've had enough from this person and I'm going to reject him and I'm going to walk out. Either spouse can uh, do that. Now, that is an individual thing. Nobody can say what is right or wrong or whatever uh, the person is going uh, through. But basically what it boils down to is understand people at the emotional level. Never generalize. Let in the individuals deal with their situations in whatever way they can. There's a lot more, as you know, we can go on discussing the whole day. Today, I was very happy with the type of questions and comments that came in because they were very thought provoking to me also. And I felt very nice responding uh, to this. Once again, apologies for starting a couple of minutes late because of that typical, you know, I told you technology also tends to reject us once in a while. But then we caught up and we had a lovely time. I had a lovely time. I hope you also had a lovely uh, time. And the numbers are growing, which is very encouraging. Uh, to me that there are more people whom I'm being able to reach out to in my own humble way and I will continue to do that and we shall meet again as usual next Saturday 11 o'clock. Until then have a lovely weekend and have a lovely week ahead because those of you who are in Bangalore now hopefully we are going to be having unlock 1.0 so we can do some things which we could not do for the last couple of months. Have a lovely time. See you next Saturday. Bye bye.